Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, welcome back. So, this is the uh, next uh, series of lecture. So, earlier was uh, the something like a lab session, MATLAB. I have presented uh, the MATLAB solution, MATLAB algorithm, also the code, uh, how to do the interpolation using the mesh free method, even with the very irregular grid. So, we had a nice approximation. And now, so we may not need to reconstruct always the function. So many times we need to do only the computation of derivative in the space. Yeah. So we are still in the 1D in this series of lectures. So I do not uh, go. So I in the in maybe I may go up to second order uh, in the two dimensional case. Now this uh, lecture I I concentrate myself uh, the computation. of derivatives. So it is almost same process as before, but little bit different. Yeah. So it will be for many of you a little bit uh, repetition, but at least uh, you should uh, able to do uh, reproduce uh, the result. So again, let the f is a uh, Function, the real world function R1, so at least C2. So if we go up to second order approximation, so consider in AB. Consider grid point grids xi i is equal to one to so xi in a b where i is equal to one to n and our m is compute. Derivatives, first order as well as second order derivative at the grid point itself at xi from its neighboring points. Suppose I have a function. So it is a, the x is f of x. So this is a to b. I have a grid point here. Regular as well as irregular I have shown in the interpolation. So we can generate a very irregular point. And then I have my discrete value here. So grid points are here. So discrete values are here. So now we are talking about the interpolation. So I am sitting at any point i. So at point x i. So I have the neighbor on the left, on the right, or if I am on the boundary, I have a neighbor point only on the right. If I am on this this uh, right boundary, I have neighboring point only on the left. So at point i. I find the neighbor and from this neighboring point values, I want to compute the derivative at point xi. What is the derivative of this function 
f yeah so let x i j which is a sum of x i be the neighbors of x i inside h so i have de so we define the the distance h so h is uh, if i generate with certain time del uh, space delta x so which is uh, something like 3 times delta x the number of neighbor is so m in our code maybe it is nv if you like so instead of writing two spelling i just write one one m i would say m and now again so to compute to compute derivatives we again use Taylor's expansion of f of x i j around f of x i. So how is it? So first order. Let us start with the first order. It means you do the Taylor expansion of the first order f of x i of j minus is equal to f of x i plus x i j minus x of i f of x plus e of x i j where j is running from 1 to m. So you remember in the finite difference formula what we have we had like if it is a very regular point yeah if it is very regular point then in the first order i had either i minus 1 and i or i plus 1 and i so if i take only two neighbor so i is a neighbor of itself so yeah? Here, this x i is one of the so x i j is one of the x i. So if this particle point is sitting here, so this is the neighbor of itself. So all central it is called like a central point. So x i is a neighbor. It is belong to this neighbor list x i j. Yeah. So this set of neighbor list so x i is itself. So if you choose if the grids are regular and you choose either the left two point or right two point so in that case what do you get you get two neighbor then you can exactly get the finite difference formula but here in our case what is happening that our grids are not equidistant they are not regular and then we have one unknown here and more than one unknown is our the system of equation so m which is basically more than one or two therefore we have we have to minimize the system by the least square method so therefore i call it as generalized Finite difference formula. Yeah, finite difference method, not formula. This is generalized finite difference. So exactly in the finite difference, also we had done the Taylor expansion, and then because then we just took 
first order then just taking a either backward or forward then we are getting the first order derivative so here instead of having a regular grid so in the taylor expansion what we had here is delta x yeah and now we have d of x so it is not so delta x are not equal always so here is smaller here is larger so what we have seen in our previous uh, computation that so we had very randomly distributed grid points therefore we cannot have our final difference formula but it is exactly final difference method therefore we call it as the generalized final difference so let me remove this so i don't have my delta x here so here f of x i j and f of x i are known values yeah so in our approximation what we had to do that we are assuming that f of some x o approximate the closest neighbor therefore we are subtracting on both sides the f of x minimum but f of x minimum is the point x i itself because i am sitting at the point x i a minimum of its it is itself this one so we don't need to subtract it yeah so it is exactly on the on the point we are here and also x i j minus x i are known so the unknown is is f of x so again we have one unknown and m m equations so we know it how to do like in the interpolation we determine f of x minimizing the errors so what are the errors let us see that from this relation now let let me write uh, this as uh, 18.1 so from 18.1 equation system or equations 18.1 can be rewritten since this value is known i put it on the left hand side f of x i j minus f of x i is equal to x i of j minus x of i f of x plus e of x i j so again for the sake of simplicity we denote b of j is equal to here j runs from 1 to m so b of j is equal to f of x i j minus f of x i d of x j is equal to x of x i j minus x i so this is the list of x i this is a list of never here and e j is equal to e of x i j and f x is unknown i keep it as it so in this way we can write our b j is equal to d x j times f of x plus e of j j is equal to 1 to 
m so minimizing the error means we just put the error is equal to bj minus dxj into f of x for 1 to m so this is nothing we can write this as a matrix form e1 up to em is equal to here b1 up to b of m minus so this is a column vector again dx1 up to dxm times f of x and let us denote this as the e this is the vector v minus so this is the m by 1 matrix so in later we will have m by 2 matrix so now i denote it in our this is our standard symbol m times f of x so this is our error let us denote it as a 18.2 so minimizing error either from here or directly e 18.2 means so it is not much different from before it is almost same so i am again repeating so that you will be if you are missing little bit understanding in the audio lecture so that it will be clearer minimization of functional f of now it is a function of f of x so i had given before f of a is the same is equal to summation of wj ej square j is equal to 1 to m so this we can write into the matrix form e transpose w e which is equal to b minus m a transpose w so is a w is again the diagonal matrix w1 up to wm 0 0 times uh, b minus m a just take the sign opposite so we can write m a minus b times w times b minus m a so m a minus b here so is equivalent so just taking minus symbol and the product is plus so minimization means del f f x y del of f x is equal to zero this implies we get i don't want to repeat again all the formula we get explicitly f of x is equal to m transpose w m inverse m transpose times m transpose w of b let us uh, rewrite f of x is m transpose w m inverse times m transpose w of b this is our explicit expression i denote it as 18.3 yeah and now 
we know M, this is a geometrical matrix. We know W because the weight matrix is a function of dx and h. And we know the V, which is the difference between the functional value, a neighbor, and the center point. So now we can get explicitly. So how? Just write a formula so that in the algorithm, in the coding, we can quickly write this formula, just plug over there. So f of x is equal to just uh, it is m transpose. So if it is m here, yeah, here yeah, m is equal to where m is a m by 1 matrix dx1 up to dxm. So m transpose, this is the, so m is a column matrix, so m transpose is a row 1 dx1 dxm times w is a diagonal matrix wm is only in the diagonal, the other part is 0 times the m transpose wm dx1 up to dxm. So this is inverse times m transpose dx1 up to dxm, the diagonal matrix w1 up to wm, and then the vector b1 up to bm. Yeah? So what is inside? This is diagonal matrix. If you multiply this row vector with a diagonal, you get w1 dx1 up to wm dxm. So all the component w goes here. And then w1 dx1 times dx1 is w1 dx1 square plus blah, blah, blah. So then we get a summation of j is equal to 1 to m, wj dx of j square inverse times, so again the same, so w1 dx1 w2 dx2 up to wm dxm times b1, then we get summation of j is equal to 1 to m wj dxj times vj, yeah? So it is same as what we had before in our uh, interpolation method. So formula is same, the only difference is that there it was the difference between neighbor value and some nearest one, but here the nearest one is the point itself, because we are looking the derivative at every discrete point, not to any in between, yeah? This is the difference. Now you can put this inverse on the denominator, so this is equal to sum of j is equal to 1 to m dxj bj divided by sum of wj dxj square j runs from 1 to m. So this is our first order derivative. Yeah? So when we get a first order derivative, if the denominator, the summation of wj dxj square not is equal to 0, no derivative. So we need, we must have summation of wj dxj square is not equal to 0. So when is it 0? Suppose what we had, we had, uh, we have seen in our interpolation when we have generated the random number. So we have generated the random number. 
that you have seen, they are very somewhere very close here and somewhere here. Something like that. Yeah. So if I am sitting at this point, so I may have a point very close also somewhere here. So if all the points are sitting at the xi, yeah, if all of xi are on xi, then we have no solution. Means no derivative. When it will happen, so when we move the point, somehow they cluster together, and some point are very far, and some are clustering together. Maybe if it is our boundary, somehow you you have the motion going here. It is a boundary. If the points, what happen? All are clustering at this point here. And we want to approximate the derivative here. Then what will happen that all points are sitting together and some points are far away. So some points are still here. And this point are clustering here. And I find the neighbor inside the edge, only this one or two point. And then I get this is equal to zero. Yeah. Therefore, there is a constraint that in one dimensional case, all points should not be in the same point. So if it, they are lying at the same point, then we don't get the derivative. So that is a restriction that we can see in the simulation. Therefore, what we can do that in our simulation, we can remove the points if they are very close. So if they are clustering or if they are far away from each other, so we can introduce some points if they make hole. If they they scatter and they make a hole, so we have to create the point. Then once we create the point, we have to do the interpolation because we have to assign a value. And the, that interpolation we have to use, which we have derived in our earlier lecture. Therefore, this was the reason why I have introduced you the interpolation. And now I have de described little bit difference with the finite difference formula than this. Therefore, due to the irregular grids, we call it as the generalized finite difference. We call it as a mesh free. Mesh free means that we do not have any relation between i and i minus one or i plus one. So we have only disorder point of uh, uh, grid of point. They don't need to be ordered. Therefore. Here we call it as the mesh-free method or grid-free method, whatever you like, or meshless method. So there are many people, different people use different name. You can find in the literature if you Google. So I think we stop uh, today lecture. And next uh, I will again continue with the second order derivative because if we solve the viscous problem, so we have to solve the approximate second order derivative, then first order is not sufficient. So next lecture, I will talk on the second order derivative, the approximation of second order derivative. Thank you.